If you're wondering which monitors for programming are worth your money, stick around. After we run through each product, I'll give you my personal tick. Would I buy it or would I skip it? No fluff, just my honest opinion. Let's get into it. BenQ PD3225U. This thing is a Mac user's dream with its sharp 4K resolution and IPS black tech that makes your code editor's dark theme look like a black hole. Plus, the colors are crazy accurate but it's stuck at a measly 60 hertz refresh rate, so scrolling through your endless code feels less like gliding and more like a slideshow. And the built-in speakers are so weak you'll think you're listening through a tin can. Would I buy it? Yes, if I wanted a monitor that outperforms the Apple Studio display for way less money, leaving me enough cash to actually buy the new MacBook to go with it. Dell G3223Q. I'm pretty sure this Dell is a gaming monitor having an identity crisis giving you a slick 4K resolution and a buttery smooth 144Hz refresh rate that makes scrolling through code feel amazing. Text clarity is fantastic for long coding sessions, but it has no USB-C port. So welcome to Dongle City, population you, and you can't even rotate it for vertical code, which is a straight up crime for a programming monitor. Would I buy it? Maybe. If I wanted a monitor that's perfect for both debugging code and then raging at 12-year-olds in Fortnite after work. Asus ProArt Display PA279CRV The Asus PA279CRV is a connectivity king with a 96-watt USB-C port that powers and connects my laptop with a single cable, making my desk cleaner than my code for once. It boasts incredible out-of-the-box color accuracy and sharp text but the stand is a joke with absolutely no height adjustment, so I hope you have a pile of old textbooks ready to prop it up unless you want to code with a hunchback. Would I buy it? Yes, if I lived the laptop lifestyle and needed a simple one-and-done monitor that just works, assuming I have good posture or a good chiropractor. LG 32GQ750-B. This LG monitor is huge at 32 inches but it's only a quad high definition display, not 4K, which means text can look a bit fuzzy, like you're programming with Vaseline smeared on your glasses. It's primarily a gaming display with a super fast 165 Hertz refresh rate, which is completely useless for coding, but fantastic for smoothly watching cat videos when you're supposed to be working. Would I buy it? No. For a programming monitor, the lower resolution at this size is a deal breaker. My code needs to be sharper than my comeback to a bad pull request. Asus ProArt Pad 279CV. This ProArt monitor is the older sibling in the lineup, featuring a gorgeous 4K panel with professional grade color accuracy that will make your IDE's syntax highlighting look like a work of art. However, Getting those perfect colors requires you to spend an eternity in the settings menu like some kind of digital wizard, and it costs a pretty penny for the privilege. Would I buy it? No. I'm here to write code that creates bugs, not spend all day calibrating a monitor just to make sure the red in my error messages is the perfect shade of doom. LG 27G850A. This thing gives you that sweet, sweet 4K resolution for incredibly sharp text, and its nano IPS black panel actually tries to give you decent contrast, which is a nice change of pace from your usual washed out IPS displays. But then it completely fumbles the bag with its pathetic HDR performance and a local dimming feature that makes blacks look more like a gloomy gray, so your perfect dark mode setup will look kind of sad. Would I buy it? Maybe. If I only cared about the sharp resolution for my code and could ignore the fact that its blacks are having an existential crisis. Samsung S80UA. I'm in love with the single USB-C cable that gives you display, data, and a whole 90 watts of power, meaning you can finally ditch that chunky laptop brick and ascend to single cable nirvana. However, it has no speakers, so I hope you enjoy coding in dead silence, and its mediocre contrast means your dark themes will look more like dark-ish themes. Would I buy it? Yes, that 90-watt USB-C connection is just too convenient for a clean programming setup to pass up. LG 27GR93U The 4K resolution on this 27-inch screen makes text fantastically clear, and it's bright enough to use in a well-lit room without squinting at your screen like a confused mole. The problem is, the stand has no swivel, it handles reflections poorly, and the plastic chassis feels so cheap you'll wonder if they made it out of recycled yogurt cups. Would I buy it? 
No, it has wide viewing angles, but I can't get over the cheap feel and lack of basic adjustments when other monitors in this price range are trying harder. Cooler Master Tempest GP27U. This beast uses mini LED backlighting with 576 dimming zones, giving you a razor sharp 4K image and a crazy high contrast ratio that makes your dark themed IDE look properly black for once, not a sad charcoal color. The only catch is that in some specific dark scenes, you might see some light blooming around bright objects, so your cursor might occasionally look like a tiny ghost with a halo. Would I buy it? Yes, it's an awesome way to get near OLED Mobile Blacks and insane brightness without the OLED price tag and burn-in anxiety. Asus XG27 UCD MG. Man, the 4K QD OLED panel on this thing makes text so unbelievably sharp that it makes my old monitor look like it's displaying everything in 480p, and the perfect blacks will ruin all other screens for you. Of course, it's an OLED, so you get the bonus feature of constantly living with the low-level anxiety of potential burn-in if you leave your static code on screen for too long. Would I buy it? Yes, without a doubt. The image and text quality are just on another level and make staring at code all day a genuinely beautiful experience. Asus ROG Strix XG27 UCS. This thing is a 4K gaming monitor that makes text so sharp it could cut you, thanks to its packed pixel density on a 27-inch screen. But honestly, its gaming features are total overkill for coding, and the contrast is pretty average, so your perfect dark theme might just look… darkish. Would I buy it? Maybe, if my day job was coding and my night job was poning noobs at 160 frames per second. Alienware WA2725QF This monitor has a bonkers dual-mode feature, letting you switch from 4K to a lower resolution at 360Hz which is about as useful for programming as a chocolate teapot. It does have incredibly vibrant colors and gets super bright, but good luck getting the software to actually recognize the damn thing is plugged in. Would I buy it? No, I need a monitor that works, not one that has an identity crisis and requires a therapist to connect to my computer. MSI MAG 274 UPF E2 here we have the Value Champion, packing 4K resolution, a high refresh rate, and even a USB-C port with power, all without making your wallet weep openly. The catch is the contrast ratio is so low that your code editor's dark mode will look more like a gloomy overcast day in London. Would I buy it? Yes, it's a fantastic deal if you can live with blacks that are more like very, very dark gray. Dell U2723QE. This is the Swiss Army knife of monitors, loaded with more ports than a major shipping harbor and an IPS black panel that makes text ridiculously clear and crisp. It's so practical and purpose-built for productivity, it's almost boring. Plus, you might have to choose between top refresh rates or max USB speeds, which feels like a dumb choice to have to make. Would I buy it? Yes, this is the smart, sensible choice for any serious programmer who values connectivity and perfect text over flashy features. Dell U4025QW. This absolute unit of an ultra-wide monitor gives you so much space you could fit your entire application, its documentation, and probably a movie on one screen. The downside is it's so massive it might actually be overwhelming, and it requires a beast of a graphics card to run smoothly without making your computer lag just from scrolling. Would I buy it? No, my desk isn't a landing strip and I'm not trying to compensate for anything. Plus, it's ridiculously expensive. Dell S32221 QS. I got my hands on this 32-inch 4K curved screen, and it gives you a ton of space for all your code. Plus, the text is super sharp, which is a big win. The downside is that the viewing angles are pretty terrible, so don't expect to show off your brilliant code to anyone standing next to you, and the ergonomics are so limited you might as well just prop it up on a stack of old pizza boxes. Would I buy it? Yes, if I was on a tight budget and just needed a huge 4K screen to stare at all day and didn't care about adjusting it. BenQ RD 320UA. This thing is literally marketed as a coding monitor with special modes to make text pop and a matte finish that laughs in the face of glare, which my eyes are definitely thankful for. But it's stuck in the past with a 60 Hertz refresh rate, making it useless for any post-work gaming. And the USB-C cable that comes with is so short, it's practically a joke. Would I buy it? Yes, this is an easy one. If your primary gig is coding for long hours, this monitor's eye care features and KVM switch are a lifesaver for your eyeballs and your cable management. 
BenQ Mobius EX3410R. This ultra-wide monitor is an absolute unit, giving you enough screen real estate to have your code, 100 browser tabs, and your team chat open all at once with a buttery smooth 144Hz refresh rate. On the other hand, it's a gaming monitor at heart, so the color accuracy isn't exactly professional grade, and the curve is so aggressive it feels like the screen is trying to give you a big ol' hug. Would I buy it? Maybe. It's a great pick if you're a work hard, play hard type who codes all day and games all night on the same screen. BenQ EW3280U. Here we have a solid 32 inch 4K monitor that's a jack of all trades, delivering a crisp picture for your code and great colors for when you're slacking off and watching movies instead. The problem is, it's also a master of none with its basic 60 Hz refresh rate and an HDR monitor that's more like HDR ish and a stand only tilts, which is just lazy design. Would I buy it? Yes, if I needed a single monitor for my entire life. Coding, entertainment, and maybe a little bit of casual gaming on the side. LG 27 GS93QE. The OLED panel on this LG makes dark mode code editors look absolutely incredible with perfect blacks and vibrant colors. And the 240Hz refresh rate is so fast, it feels like you're looking into the future. But, and this is a big but, the fear of OLED burn-in from static code windows is very real. And it isn't the brightest screen out there, so it might struggle in a sunny room. Would I buy it? No, not for a programming workhorse. The constant anxiety about burn-in would drive me insane, making it a beautiful but impractical choice for anyone who writes code for a living. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you pick the monitors for programming for you. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Links to all of these products mentioned in this video will be in the description.